Welcome to a new test and teardown video. I think this is going to be three individual videos because this is the complete Siemens radio test set, but I'll just focus on one of them in this video and it's going to be this one. This is the Siemens FSE30. This is actually a frequency shift decoder. So I've been Googling a little bit and it seems to be from 1966. There's even a little CRT in here. I don't know exactly how to use it, but this is the, oh, right. Oh, what I think we should just do is we should power it up and see if something works. RS232 and analog decode outputs. So this is a frequency shift uh, decoder. So it will have some filters for the different ball rates and different deviations. And uh, yeah, that is more or less what it will do, right? So here I can select some different inputs, the A or B inputs or the I don't know exactly where are the inputs. See, this was supposed to be the input, I guess. And this is a 6.3 millimeter jack. So that is what I'm going to try with. I also got the A and B. I don't know if this is, it looks like it's also inputs or something like that. And what is that level? And it says 200 kilohertz to 30 kilohertz, but it's it was supposed to be. I've been reading a little bit in the manual, and it was looking like 30 kilohertz, uh, more or less only. So I don't know how you select the different frequencies. So I'm gonna go and power it up and see if there is any kaboom. So I guess we're ready to power it up. I did, of course, the classic ohms check. <laughs> So we got 37 ohms between these two when it's on and nothing when it's off. And also we got no connection to chassis. So I believe it is more or less safe to power it up. At least it's not going to kill me in the first few seconds. So let's plug this in, give it 220 something. Are we ready? 10 watts, 15 watts. Really? We got the light in this. Okay, let me turn off this. Because I was hoping to see a little bit of green. Yes, look at that. Oi, 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 oi. We got something. <laughs> the scope is working. It's very, very dim. Let's see if I can... Yeah, look at that. But it's beautiful. So what is this? Oh, this is intensity. Probably this will be focused, right? Yeah. All right, we got something. Definitely we got something. So let's uh, let's see what can this thing do. Oh, TB said thingy. What is that? I have no clue. And then we got huh? Not a damn. Anyway, let's plug in some uh, signals and see. Yeah, that is what we need to do, I guess. I actually think this works. And I managed to get it to do something. Oh, you look at that. So this meter is insanely sensitive. Here you adjust the sensitivity. And of course you need to have it here in the green. And then we're talking about a very, very little bit of millivolts here. 
See, those are the millivolts, and look what happens. See, if I crank up and down the millivolts on my signal generator. So also what I found is the frequency is a little bit off. This one's supposed to be 30 kilohertz, right? So if I go here and poke around with the frequencies, look what happens here on the meter. Deep, 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 deep. So that is the frequency deviation. So I got 100 hertz per division. I can go here. Deep, deep, deep. So yeah, it's definitely showing the frequencies and stuff. And if I give it a lot more deviation, I can of course make it trigger something. This is the analog and digital output. And then I can I haven't figured out exactly what this one does. And let's see what I did. I, I'm looking here at the analog output. Let me give it, yeah. Yeah, here we go, see? See, this is, this is the frequency needed to be very, very close to a trick. And then I can play with the amplitude again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I think it really works. And uh, if I could just set this up to do frequency modulation, I probably could figure that out, but that is not so interesting uh, right now. The fun thing is that it's working and it's doing its thing. Very, very sensitive. So the input here was supposed to be here and only a little bit of millivolts. I think we better try and open it. Is this a bulb or is this a, a little... Oh, that will be the fuse, yeah? Okay. It should be fairly easy to open this one. Now we are inside. <laughs> this is just a beautiful piece of equipment. Really, really nicely made. Let's first look at this, the CRT section. And again, we see numbering on everything. See, resistors, capacitors. So they're adding all these numbers to make it uh, service friendly. I think this is super nice they do this. I really like this super big socket for the CRT. That is so beautiful. And the analog and RS232 outputs here. I believe this is a modification somebody made. Because look at that. See all sorts of... Let's get some light in here. See, this got to be a homebrew kind of build this and build that, right? This is, this is very, very <laughs> homebrew. All right. And the different modules that are named. And we can probably unscrew this and pull up the modules. But I don't understand how you can pull up those modules from their sockets down there when they got pot meters and stuff going through the front plate obviously you need to take off the front then otherwise this is not going to happen so this is probably how you service this you unscrew yeah the entire front panel take out the the knobs and then you can pull them up it's still Better than nothing, right? So they actually got a plan for service, but you just can't pull them up like that. This is at least what I think. Let's go and get a screwdriver and have a look. Yeah, this didn't help a lot. Also, I see some screws down here. And it's more evident. Somebody remove the screw here so we got some four little markings so i believe this one actually will fall off so this is tz30 this one is probably called yeah see here 
tz 30 so this is how we can put it back let's try and pull this module out so to do this we need to look at the bottom it is really beautifully made so if this is the tz 30 i guess this will be the the screw for it how do you like the cables the way it is made like that right really nice this looks like the modifications this is definitely not up to the original kind of quality standards quite thin wires look at that module so this is truly 1960 design OA5 diodes and the ADY12 transistors really big stuff this is quite beautiful I think it's funny with this rectifier here probably needed a diode they could handle more volts. See? They're going in on the minus to the plus. So that would be two diodes. They didn't use the AC input here. So this is a rectifier. Or half bridge rectifier, right? Well, that's funny. Whoa. That is some heavy, heavy. Look at those inductors or transformators or something. They're like really, really heavy, full of copper. And what is. <laughs> There's a funny smell in here. <laughs> Look. It looks like. Yeah, give me a second. I need one more hand here. I remove this screw and then I had the idea I could bend this up. No, I need one more screw. Hey. <laughs> that is so cute. So that will be all the diodes, diodes and transistors and stuff. Just hanging up the air like that. Is that that will be capacitors? Look at those. Of course, they're using Siemens components when they can. Yeah, somebody had a lot of fun designing this. And this one occupies two slots and see you can't put them in the wrong because of these it sticks up and they're not gonna go in here so that is how it works this module is very very heavy and uh, it's all sealed we got some adjustments screws here at the end and you can access those through the holes here and at the bottom there's also Oh, an adjustment screw at the side you can access here. There's a lot of hand work. Everything here is handmade. Wires and everything full of stuff all over the place here. So let's try and uh, look in this module. Unscrew these two, I guess. We are inside this very heavy module. And what do you know? I can't remember I've seen anything like this before a motor and a gearbox we've got some sensors and counters so it will be able to detect how fast the motor spins 
Look at all the gearings here from the motor unit and it goes to the tuning. So this is done mechanical, geared and whatnot. And look at this. There are what is that? That will be must be some position sensors. So on this PCP that's rotating here, we got four little contacts on each side that will create a this is probably the position encoder from 1960s. Oh yeah yeah. Look at that. So we got some tracks and that will tell the electronics where are we? <laughs> oh, this is just beautiful. I really really enjoy when I find something this fascinating inside equipment and that is exactly why it is so much fun to open old and special and very expensive equipment because this was of course super super expensive and very very special back then wow it is beautiful this unit is definitely something what else can we find in here this is going to be tough to top don't you just love this so all this goes down here and probably through all this and some relays and then maybe the relays will tell uh, some of the buttons they will this will probably be for the tuning of the different frequency and then you go up down tuning this and that and uh, i don't know what exactly i didn't hear the motors spin when i was playing with this uh, before but maybe you can't hear it in here right uh -huh. so even the motor is very special is this an induction motor of some sort See, there's some rotating piece here and there's a big hole in the middle. I really can't see how the motor is made, but I could probably just stick my finger in here. See, yes, it spins completely freely. But if I look in here, I see, ah, uh, this is a magnet. This is a permanent magnet. And then I see here. I can see copper windings and stuff down there. So that will be up here. This will be the contacts to the motor in there. You can probably open here and have a look. So it says plus minus. Ooh, we we're probably not supposed to. Ah, this is of course the timing for the contacts. <laughs> that is some cute system. I better put this back again. So I was right about how to access the front module. Um, all the modules here, the only way you can pull them out is of course to take away the front plate. And that is fairly easy because all you have to do is just take out all the knobs and then just those four screws and then lift up the front plate and put this away and then you can access everything easy easy so that will be the CRT so there's a glass in there and quite a lot of uh, space before we see the, the CRT now I really wanted to open here and have a look at the and the input module because this is of course a normal jack so a normal jack, jack fits into, and it clicks quite normal. Ugh. But what the heck is that? I don't know what that is. It looks a little bit like jack, but it is not. So this is made intentionally, so you can't stick this in. But what the heck is that? So this is the input module. It occupied three sockets look at that so this is the input module and if you see something here I find a little bit interesting look at the lines 
from the workshop. This was hand manufactured and it actually applies to all the other units as well. If I look real carefully, I can see all those hand markings. So somebody has been doing a little bit of handy work on this unit. And also this switch up here. This is a very special switch. You rotate this. You rotate this. And here in the front, there are no markings, nothing that tells what you do. And maybe this is the what you switch is between 200 kilohertz or 30 kilohertz is what you do here. Oh yes, of course, here is the marking. It's me who is absolutely imbecile. What a mega idiot. Look at that. See, this is when it's upside down, and this is, of course, when it's... Oh, man. Horizontal, vertical. Easy, easy. And this is the 30 kilohertz mode. And in here, you'll have the two different oscillators, of course. See, there is one crystal. So this is, of course, the first oscillator and the mixer or something like that right so where's the other crystal i would expect to find another one here as well maybe it is in the next one. Ooh, here it is a big one so wow that is a beautiful crystal anyway what can we see from this it's actually readable the frequency 200 and come on man is it just impossible to get the shit in folks 200 and something kilohertz right yeah 230 it says ah <sighs> difficult oh by the way those connectors look at that there's definitely jack connectors all of it stereo jacks and the uh, the ZF input is a normal 6.3, but a mono type. But look at that. The other twos, they're a little bit smaller. I can't remember I've seen this before. So that is very interesting. I love it when I can learn something. So this is the next module. Of course, this is the 25 kilohertz oscillator a very big crystal of course because it's 25 kilohertz see all the transistors so that's probably oscillator and mixer and all that have you seen this special capacitor before see there's a center pin or a tap around its center 2000 picofarad 1% wow Oh, this module is really heavy. Okay, this is, of course, all... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is the bandwidth. So that will be selectable on this multi-deck selector. Oh, man, there's a lot of ferrite in this thing. So it's all passive filters, super-tuned to the exact bandwidth and everything here We're using shielded cables and all that wow it is just amazing imagine tuning all this and dialing in all this stuff and there yeah well done Siemens man this is a half a kilo look at all those a million windings. No need to take out the last one. That looks a little bit like a power supply. Yeah. See the rectifiers and stuff. And here they went all the way to 
place the transistors so they're nicely and neatly mounted. So that is cute. They're really happy about those rotation switches. Click, click, click. Oh, look at that one. It's only half of it. Ah, okay. So that's how it works. Up and then down. And the other one is both of them. Okay. Fascinating. This is just me. I really wanted to clean up. See, this plastic was dirty. The screen was dirty. But then, look, there's actually a burn mark in the CRT. That's a little bit annoying. But it's a beautiful, tiny, tiny CRT. Let me see if I can take it out. So now I took out the tube. Oh, look at that socket. It's just so big. So it's a DG7 52A. It says be careful, this tube is without air in it. So be careful. It's got implosion danger. Made in West Germany. So normally this will be what 1948, but that is not it's 1960. This one. Something like that. Yeah, it's a beautiful tube. I'm really sad about the burned in in the phosphor. Otherwise I could have made a really cute CRT clock with this one. But anyway, I'm going to assemble everything and trade this for something else, something more fun. So we can make another funny video. I'm gonna clean up everything here and then assemble it. Oh yeah. This is the intensity and the focus for the screen, so that means that we've got really, really nasty high voltages on this pot, on those two pot meters. See what they did? Everything here is glass fiber, even the arm here. So this is a special adapter for extra isolation, so that they do take safety very, very seriously.